Hello there. How long have you been going on for? Um, let me just check the time. I've been, I've set this up at five till seven, so that's like ten minutes I've been waiting. Oh. Well, well, once it started. And just so you know, at 8.30, so less than 30 minutes from now, there is another guest that I got for the podcast, so just letting you know, it will be cut short. That's fine. Okay, let's get started. Alright then. So what's new? Not much. Same old, same old, I guess. Hmm. So have you bought any new companies yet? No, I haven't bought anything else yet. Uh, I'm just reinvesting in what I got right now. Smart move. Yeah. I'm wanting to play a new. I'm wanting to play a merger, a potential merger. <laughs> so I've been okay. Buying. There's big the two supermarkets in in America are going about to merge, but by in the end of 2024, if they if the regulations come through, they're going to merge. So I'm playing both sides. I'm buying. All right then. They merged to basically they're merging to basically compete with like the likes of Amazon, Walmart. Ah. At the end of it, once it's fully done, they'll have about five thousand, five thousand stores between. They would have five thousand stores combined, and they would have a and they would be a very dominant player in the American markets. Oh, it sure will be. <laughs> So, uh, Disney Down Under, I guess. Yep. I can't wait. They're going to sell... My suspicion is, Jamie... They're going to sell off Disney my... Plus. This is a this is a company... This is a, my perspective as a, as a Disney shareholder. This is what my suspicion is, and this is what I potentially think is going to happen. So, if you want to see the perspective of a, a Disney shareholder, I will say this. I personally do believe that they are going to split the company into two companies. Oh. I believe the fee I believe the theme park and the cruise business will become one separate entity. And I believe they're gonna package all their shitty stuff that nobody gives a fuck about into a separate company and then blast it off in the air. Basically use it as a way to get rid of the scrap and the shit that nobody wants while making money off it. So the people that are very die hard about Disney and the ones that love the Disney the movie business, they can buy that business. And it's, it'll be an easier way for them to be able to sell their assets. Hmm. And people so, are saying, but what about, and they're going to say about, what, but what about licensing rights of that? Before they set up, before they leave, they let, they set the licensing rights as perpetuity. So basically, basically they're never going to be able to, they may, as long as they set it to the point where they make a deal with the, with a new company, basically, before they do merge and basically say, we'll do a, a deal where this, where this is non-negotiable and you're basically going to give us lifetime access to this thing. Until we decide, but until we become, become, until we become insolvent, or we potentially die as our own company, or get bought. As soon as they get bought, then that's another story. But hmm. right, then. I think they're probably potentially going to have a similar deal to Marvel, right? Uh-huh. Marvel, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and that Marvel streaming rights, and that they give anybody that does it. If they don't get used, they get they, if they don't get used in a certain time, they revolt back to that old company, to the old company. But I do personally believe they're going to split that company up into two. Movie business, cruise lines, and hotels, and theme parks. Ah. So they're going to separate the holiday real estate and the media, by it seems. That's my suspicion. Either that, uh, either that, or I I also potentially think they might be willing to spin. If they they can't get an acquisition for that, I think they might be willing to potentially spin off all their linear TV assets into a separate spin off it into a separate company, right? And basically just a light, and then whoever wants to buy that, they can buy it. Because let's be real here, I'm sure there's going to be some venture capitalist fucker who will want that those assets and just buy them on the fucking cheap, and then of course they would have a profit. That's what I think will happen anyway. Mm. Okay. <sighs> I also do think that I also feel like there's going to be a massive opportunity in the airline industry to make a bunch of money. 
Faith, you basically told me, you, I think she sent in an article, or you or Faith sent in an article last night, but basically said that they're going to be, they're, they're going to make it harder for you to travel abroad, or in, in the States and that, by a certain date, by 2025. My suspicion is they're going to use it as a way to raise prices. So effectively, they could potentially make more money off air. Oh, great. More inflation. Yep. Yay. They also want to tax anybody as a shareholder on that more money by 20% in America. So, yeah, that's great. Those guys will just use that. They'll use that. They'll use their tax loopholes, and the everyday person will end up paying more tax. Biden's such a smart man. He doesn't realize the fact. He, oh, he knows they will. He'll use those same provisions in the tax code. It's li- likely that same as the corporate guys in, in Silicon Valley and in New York. They'll use the same tax provisions. They'll save money on taxes. Well, the everyday person who doesn't have access to an accountant will get shafted. Because they're not yes. smart enough to use those tax provisions. Or they don't have the money to be able to use those tax provisions. Or they don't know this, that they don't know the financial literacy about how to utilize those tax those tax first things to make money. So who who are you interviewing today? Uh, it's uh, it's an old guest for the from the first few seasons when I, in my first year of podcasting or well, a few first few months. Ah, uh, should be fun. Yes, indeed. Do you still do the do you still do the podcast with? with with authors. What do you mean? You the at the start you used to use like agency. I used to do like podcasts. That I... Oh yeah, oh yeah, like sending out listings to get guests on. Yeah, you still do that more. Yeah, I still do that. I do it more consistently as well. Like once every three days, I send a message to like guests on Matchmaker.fm because I'm on a on a free plan where I'm limited to like ten free conversation starters a month so what i do is spread them out by three days so i use all 10 within 30 days which is like a whole month yeah good and i also have like radioguestless.com which is a website used by many media outlets or whatever shows needs guests it's that's a popular one and then there's polywork which is like the tech savvy LinkedIn. Do you still get guests from Polywork? Uh, I, I haven't set, I haven't put out an opportunity on Polywork in ages. Ah. So. But I will what, I will get back to it though. What about the opinionistics? Do you still make episodes for that? Yes, still doing episodes for opinionistics as well. Good. Yeah. Podcasts are fun, but once you've done enough of them, you kind of want to just... Just settle down and just enjoy life. Yep. Podcasts are fun. Podcasts are fun. It's just, I don't think I really have it in me to do them anymore. Yeah. Did them for a while. I like doing I don't like mind joining them now and again, but I think I'm done with making podcasts. I think I'd rather do spaces. Yeah. Still talking, doing podcasts about the truth. Doing Twitter spaces about the truth. Yeah. Uh, okay, what else is there? Hmm. Not I'm not sure how this new merger with the new the, the stock split, the split, the company split with Kellogg's gonna go. Like they're supposed to be by the end of this year they're supposed to be splitting that into two companies. Yeah. Uh yeah. The snack envision the cereal 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 business. Alibaba is supposed to be splitting into six to seven com- six seven companies by the end of the year, end of next one to two years, or the start mm. of the year. So they're going to start splitting all their businesses up, and it's going to become a mass holding company. I don't think they're doing it because they want to. I think they're doing it because I think the government is forcing them to. It's but, always the government. The ch- but I actually think there's actually an opportunity to make money in that, right? Some of these businesses and that, like, some of these businesses, right, I actually do believe that they actually have value, and I do believe that these things are still, some of these companies are still very young. Like, these companies will need money, will need money, and they will need support, but if they do over long term, they could be worth something. Like, this is a, po- there's a company that's going to be like a postal service company, right? That's like UPS, or China's version of UPS, which is owned by Alibaba. 
there's a movie studio business that's owned by Alibaba. There's an there's a there's like a cheap marketplace for like selling products. There's Ali there's Alibaba AI, one of the biggest AI companies in the world, or like artificial intelligence companies in the world. But it's supposed to be splitting as well. But all all of Alibaba's companies are splitting. They're partly saying it's going to lock, but it should unlock value for shareholders. I think it will unlock value for shareholders. If you if you buy the stock when it's fucking cheap in that, I think you will make some money off it. If you hold them for the long, long term, I think I think there's money to be made in this, Jamie. Because simply because, well, once Alibaba does splits them, right? You leave it. They do succeed for a while, right? They do. They grow. They they grow the business. They grow the business for a bit, right? A couple of years from now, they could be acquired by some other big firm, right? Maybe they're acquired by some German or American or Brazilian or some other companies, and the the and the other people, and then they, and then potentially we get like potentially we can make some money off it off of, off of that position. I don't know. Do you think oil and gas companies are a good investment, or do you think they're overrated? Uh, it's both overrated and on the verge of kapoof, you know, like the dinosaurs. I don't think it's. Go- I don't think oil and gas is going to go away anytime soon. Well, if, if they're going to go to renewable energy, then yeah, they're still going to be around, but they're going to have to find alternatives to extracting oil because there's not many of it left. Who says we need that? There's offshore wind. Yeah, of course. There's wind, yeah, there's good. solar, there's hydro. Yeah, there's like, so there's many ways to make energy renewable. They're by, they're, a lot of these oil and gas companies are in the hydro space and not in the renewables. Oh, yes, indeed. Well, I personally don't think... Have you ever wondered what happened to the Rockefeller's, for... the, the rock, the, the Rockefeller's fortune? Well, uh, I think it just fell, fell out of relevancy. I don't think it fell out of relevancy. I think they still have that fortune. I don't think they actually they, they, they claim the net worth they made ten billion, right? Yeah. I don't believe that. Because if you think about it, how much net so all these companies, right? They've all got massive market shares, right? BP, Mobile, Exxon, Chevron. Chevron. Basically a company basically a company that's formed all out of, of Standard Oil. Who knows? Not to mention, there's rumors that the, the Rockefellers, they created the pharmaceutical industry. There's all the medicines that you've got, right? They've, they all, they have, they have some form of alcohol, of oil in them. That's the funny thing. And it wasn't for Rockefeller. Rockefeller also controls the school system as well, and the education system. Yeah, in fact, he created the system. The education system. Indeed, yeah. Yeah, it's his system. Did you know Did you know that the Rockefeller, the, the Rothschilds were heavy Zionists? And did you know that the Rothschilds funded World War One and World War Two, and fought, funded the war with Napoleon? Hmm. Did you know that they potentially might have funded the war in Iraq and Syria, Afghanistan? Really? The Rothschild did all that? Well, they have money. They funded both sides. Who do you yeah, think how, 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 how does the family heritage or lineage have survived that long? How do you mean their family lineage? Yeah, like, you, you know, what, I, what I'm talking about is the Rothschilds that ha- that that we know of in the history books. I'm not talking about the current members of the Rothschild family that are currently living. I'm talking about the ones in the history books that you see in historical paintings. Yeah. I, I never thought I never thought the the, the family agenda would progress so long into today's society. Well our family let's be honest with you, the family stick family family follows family. And you think you think they would stop their thing even after these generations? They might not. They might no longer do. And they might no longer do the incest thing or family thing, right? But they do have. They do keep in high circles. Hmm. Did you know Paris Paris Hilton is connected to the Rothschilds? Now that is news to me. 
Because they bought because they are Rothschild married married the Hilton family. The Rothschilds well, and the Hiltons. The more Rothschilds and the Hilton married, Hotel. Rothschilds wow! Married into the Hilton How family. did I not notice that? Uh, the Rothschild, one of the or one, I think it was the son or the daughter, but one of them married into the into the Hilton family. And uh, there's another Rothschild, if I remember, married into uh, the the Guinness family, people that own Guinness. Uh. So the people that own the Guinness Book of Records, they founded, they went in, they they got involved with that family, they married into that family. But yeah, intriguing. Yes. Did you know about the Rothschilds? The Rothschilds were both in Parliament in in Britain. In Britain. Wait, Rothschilds run for Parliament at one point? Yes, there was Rothschilds in the, as MPs. Ah, intriguing. They one of them promoted the promoted the promoted the, the ascension of a of a Jew, of a of an Israeli of an Israeli state, so a state in Palestine. One opposed the Zionist coalition. The, the Zionist, opposed, one of them. They even founded the. They even gave land to the freaking. They even gave land, help build, give, creating a building for the the parliament building in Israel. They created the building of Israel for the parliament. It's in Wikipedia things. Hmm. They also did you know that you can invest in this company. The, the Rothschilds company. Oh, was it called? They also pay, they also pay, pay a dividend. Oh. Give me a second. Let me search it up. All right, then. Go onto your stock page. Okay. Type Rothschild. Rothschild and Co. Co. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's the Paris version. Wow. I was contemplating I was contemplating investing in them. They give a dividend as well, apparently. Pretty decent one in that, in fact. If you buy into the Rothschild and Co., you could basically say I run the world. I run the world. I have stakes in Rothschild. The Rothschild and Co., the people that own the fucking central banks. Yes. <laughs> you also get paid money from them every so often. Supposedly the family that's worth trillions. Mm, okay. <laughs> I looked it up. I didn't think I would find it, but I did. Carnegie Steel is still a company, ain't it? Carnegie? Uh, I never heard of it. I never thought I've heard of that, to be honest. You've never heard of... you never heard of Dale Carnegie? The guy that... No, I, I generally never heard of it, no. Was a steel company area in the late nineties. He also basically he built some of the biggest bridges in the world, or Carnegie Steel, the massive steel company. It's no longer. I don't think it's no longer around. But uh, what else is there? Uh, Rothschilds. Mm-hmm. They're a powerful family and they're still around. Yeah. Why? Why do you think World War One and World War Two were started? Well, what 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 do countries get from being involved in wars? Money. Exactly. Now, now you know the reason. But you need to realize World War Two was not about was not about fighting was not about civil liberties and that it was between two fa- two globalist factions, one that wanted to conquer it quickly, one one that wanted to conquer quickly and effectively, and one that wanted to take the static and long term approach. We were the ones that wanted to take the long term approach, and the Nazis were the ones that wanted to go straight away and co- conquer. It was just it was an infighting between capital globalists. They were both as bad as each other. One yeah. wanted to take slow. One wanted to take the slow, long approach and follow the plan. The other one wanted to, to freaking say fuck the plan and literally just let's just go and kill everybody and take control. <laughs> what else is there? What is a woman? Someone that can give birth. Someone that can have sex. And someone that can actually. Also- someone that can have, can have a period. Okay. 
I see a woman as someone who has XX chromosomes. Quite logical, that's how it is, in my opinion. Um, there are only two genders. The, fact, the, the left will not like you for this, but there are only two genders, male and female. Anything else? Well, is- really, th- there's only two sexes. Gender is like a social spectrum, if you think about it. Yeah. Se- there really are two sexes, only two sexes. And gender to me is just, oh, it's, gender is just male and female. That's the only thing there is. Maybe that tells you, oh, you can be, you can be a demi-human or some other bullshit like that. The well, you, could be a, you could be a furry, but the either t- smoking too much crack, or they're completely, de- or they're completely demented. There are only two genders, male and female. Mm-hmm. Anything else is literally just, is just lying to themselves. And I don't like the fact that we basically convinced our, or basically convinced our kids, kids that it's okay. They can lie to themselves. They can be manipulated. You have to ask them why. Why do they? Why do they believe what they believe? What What makes them so attached to it? You could ask, but Jamie, you could say that. Why do you think Trump's evil? And, they, and they'll never have an answer for that. And the simple answer is, Daddy government told them to hate Trump. So they hate Trump because Daddy government told them that he's a bad guy. Yes, the media is brainwashing to think that Trump's a bad guy. That's why they. That's why they. That's why they hate him. They hate him so much because the media, hate, media hates him because they, he, he's willing to. He's willing to say it how it is. He's willing to expose these people for who they are: corrupt, evil people. This is why he called them dishonest and fake. Because the news is fake. It doesn't tell the truth. It lies. At best, they would kind of twist the truth. So it looks like it's completely different. Well, something there is something that's true that is clear to everyone. That there is something that just feels a bit off. At worst, they just make make something up completely. Media over the past ten years has all been about clicks, right? They're willing to lie. They're literally they're willing to lie. They're willing to discredit, and they're willing to literally just tell fake falsehoods simply just to get clicks. They're willing to say say about events that never happened. It's like take social example, media. But take example of what they're doing to this guy, this, the fucking football chairman. The, the chairman of the, the Spanish football thing, right? They're going after him for fucking kissing a woman. Like, fuck me. If yeah, like, I get, I get it's that, weird. It's, it's very creepy, but still, it, it's volu- it, it was voluntary either way. Like, the thing is, though, if they go after this, you do realize the message they're sending, right? And I'm not talking about, oh, you're basically saying a message is, I'm sorry, I can't touch a woman. And what's going to happen to society that way, Jamie? Think 10 years from now. Oh, the men are already too scared to talk to a woman because they know they're scared of a fucking sexual lawsuit. Here's the thing. If she, if she does not like want it to be kissed by him, he, he, she, just, she, she could I just told him not to. And I'm getting, she she could have just said. But women, they don't care about that. A vast majority of women, they're willing to lie. They're willing to do whatever it takes just so they can get paid. They don't mind if they fucking shove a guy in prison. They don't sh- mind. They don't mind if they shove a guy in prison. All they care about is getting made paper. They'll lie. They'll manipulate and do whatever it takes to get what they need. And the sad thing is, there are a bunch of women like that out there. But lie, manipulate, simply just to take a man down. There's lots of them going after celebrities. They did that to fucking Johnny Depp. They, they did it to that freaking... What was the guy? Like, Jonathan Majors? They've done it to a bunch of other guys. Some of them that are... And this is why you can't trust all women. Because all most women, they lie. They're scheming, manipulative, and evil. Not all of them, but the vast majority of them are. Yeah. It's just miscommunication. This message. This basically just says, well, I'm a man. I don't want to fucking... Why would I talk? This is, and then women are going to complain. Why does no man want to talk to me or love me? Probably because they don't want to get a fucking lawsuit, love. They don't want to talk to you because they're saying, "Oh, men are too scared want... to be around women because they feel like they're going to get fucking... nothing. Nothing is ever going to be in their favor. It's going to be the woman who always wins, even even though they're in the wrong. They're still going to win. That's how society is being shaped right now, or at least the last few years." Like what? Like what does a man have to gain from talking to a woman? Like, let's be honest with you. 
if he talks to a woman and that and she doesn't like him, or oh, she's just going to say, oh, he's got, he's sex, he, he sexually assaulted me when he did nothing of the sort. Simply just because, oh, she wants attention. She wants those Instagram followers. She wants to get famous. She wants a Netflix documentary. This is what they did to Andrew Tate. In some aspects, he did nothing wrong. And yet he got, he was trying to get women, certain types of evil, manipulative women to lie on camera simply just so they could get a Netflix documentary, a Netflix deal, so they'd become famous. It's pathetic, but there's a vast majority of these women out there. I think the reason why Andrew Tay has been an easy target for everyone is that whatever he says, in my, in my opinion at least, it, it was poor choice of words. There were some things he says that comes out as something that rubs people the wrong way. That's the reason why people are attacking him. And something he says, it just it seems off to them. But it, it takes a little bit of thinking and makes like gets a sense of it. He tells things how it is. It's not my fault these butthurt people that haven't got any feelings and they can't handle the fucking truth. He's like Nigel Farage. He tells it how it fucking is. He tells the public what they need to hear when they don't fucking want to hear. He's like Trump. I don't give a fuck if it offends your feelings. Feelings are feel truth over feelings. That's it, just life. You just gotta deal with it. Yep. Truth over feelings. So, how much episode? What season you want? Your new podcast. What's so, uh, so as of this recording, or depending where it is, because of rah, just just started season thirteen. Should we start launch? Should we launch a new podcast? I think that's a good time to do so. What do you fancy? Which one do you want? What do you fancy doing? Do you want to do a podcast where we talk about conspiracy theories, or do you want to dive in that we take, <laughs> or we get guests? I don't know. Oh, whatever works. Yeah. Could be interesting to do one. Yeah. Could be interesting when we could dive about conspiracy theories. We could talk about. Uh, we could talk. I mean, there's multiple ones we can talk about. We can talk about nine eleven. We can talk about the the new world order conspiracy. We can talk about the ones with the Rothschilds, Rockefellers. Ones. We should dive into the Titanic thing, the thing with Titanic, and like what happened there, what supposedly happened there. Because if you think about it, if you look at it, right, J.P. Morgan was supposed to go on the Titanic, right? All the guys that were on that ship, right? Yeah. All guys are on the ship, right? They all opposed the Federal Reserve, right? Guess what happened? All those men died. John Jacob Astor, James Gubenbelt, Gubenbelt, Mr. Gubenbelt, and John Jacob Astor. John Jacob Astor, Mr. Go- Gubenheim, and a bunch of other, and I think it was the Pont or something like that, or a bunch of other ones. And Borgen was supposed to go on that thing, but he designed, and a couple of people, 200, I think, people cancelled on that fight last minute. So I'm guessing they had a change of heart and they decided, you know what? I think Mr. Go- I think these guys, I- am I the only one that thinks that, you know, these people that stayed on the ship, right? Those rich guys that stayed on the ship, right? Yeah. They knew for a fact, if I, if I don't leave this ship, if I leave this ship, they're going to come after me and kill me. Should I just die on the ship? People say, but well, you've got a question if Titanic wasn't, wasn't designed to happen. But what have you been told that the Titanic never actually sank? It's another ship. The reason they sh- they sank what it was called the Titanic is just to get insurance money. That's that's one side of the story I've heard about the Titanic. The Titanic was insurance money, but they also tried to get rid of a bunch of elite guys, elite ba- elite people. Some very oh, yeah, very now that that I know of, very 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 powerful men, men that opposed the Federal Reserve. Men that wanted didn't want the Rothschilds fucking thing, and they all get what did they get for it? Death. They got death. They opposed they opposed the opposition of a federal the creation of the Federal Reserve, and they got death. And then a couple of weeks later, a couple of months later, they launched the Federal Reserve because they had no opposition. Yeah. yeah. Which was basically the American bank, the American Federal Reserve or the bank in America. Yeah. Before then, what were they paying with? That's a good question. Gold? Yeah, of course. It is valuable at the time. 
they did they did pegged it once Nixon did peg the dollar from the gold from gold off the gold standard, that's when the debt became that's when things got bad. Because Amer- the American dollar is not pegged to anything apart from or apart from oil. They took they took gold off of or they took the dollar off of gold, but they backed it against oil. That is what the oil uh, people say: the dollar is backed by nothing. It's backed by oil. It's by well, the value what, of oil that's can fluctuate. What, that's what created the petrol dollar, right? Yeah. The petrol dollar yeah. is basically what replaced the gold standard. And the petrol dollar is what basically petrol dollar is basically a deal they made with the Saudi prince back then that basically said that you're going to use we're going to use we're going to make a deal with America right where they're basically going to use where we're going to only accept you you to use dollars for trade in oil once you get that once you remove the trade of oil or the trade of a dollar from oil and everybody else stops using the dollar for stuff that's what kills the the dollar because the dollar gets its its money its power from other people using it and if nobody yeah. uses the dollar anymore they so can really they can no the US it. economy is heading backed. down the mud. It's backed by the dollar. It's backed by oil. The US economy is backed by oil. That's the secret. They, when they say, oh, when they, when people say, but the, the world is backed by oil, they're not joking. It is. The world, the US dollar is backed by oil. It's been proven time after time after time. And I don't actually think printing so much money has actually helped the US dollar. I think it's actually made it worse. But yeah. So what other conspiracy theories is there? Well, uh, I remember yesterday I was heading to town with my dad to uh, the northern quarter. I've shown you pictures of my time being there. Tatarian. You know? Tatarian society. Yes. I went. I, there was this restaurant where they accept cash card payments, no cash. And uh, there was this, and the Smart City Tailors, professional alteration and dry cleaning. I think they're sending subliminal messages to people. That well, this no, is new world order. That, but they want us to only use cut. Ca- they want us to only use card. Yes, they want. They want us to pay digitally because. Uh, they can try. Well, who who else can control digitally? Well, the central bank. Well, who can control that? Well, the people that are, well, the Rothschilds can control that because they they own most of the companies. People, a vast majority don't all know this, but the vast majority of Rothschilds. I looked into ownership of. Uh, I've looked into the ownership of uh, of BlackRock, right? Charles Schwab is a big owner of it. Vanguard is a big owner of it. Larry Fink's a big owner of it. Uh, Fidelity is another one. Bank of America is an interesting owner of it as well. Who owns Bank of America? Because they apparently own a shitload of stock in BlackRock. Which is quite interesting. I'd be qu- I'm not going to lie. I'd be interested to know who owns Rothschild and Co. Would you? Actually, why don't we why don't we discuss that right now? Okay. My guess is it's going to be the. England, England, enlarged family concert. The uh, treasury shares, controlling shares, float total. Rothschild and Co. They, they, they're known to serve the British royal family and the British nobility. Give me a second. Taking a look at it. Mm-hmm. Rothschild, Cornelia, Rothschild and Co. Partners, Rothschild and Co. Morel Bernard family. Who is Morel Bernard family? That is the Morel Bernard. That isn't that Bernard Arnold, is it? Maybe, actually. The Salt family, the capital managers, the Vanguard Group, the Farquois Harnot Holdings. Let's just put it like this it's not BlackRock that owns them. <laughs> I think.
I'm guess uh, who knows. It's very hard to tell. But I'm guessing he's some very important guy. Well, at least now we know who owns Rothschild and Co. They own Rothschilds own fifty percent of their own company. I just hope they don't go after me for looking that up. I don't think if it's a it's a public website, they're not going to go after you, are you? No. Why would why would they go after you for public knowledge? Good point. It's public knowledge. I was just curious. everyone knows that. Searching for it, it wasn't exactly open, but yeah, I think we'll end this podcast here. All right.